All right, boys. Daily market review. Today the market were amazing. Nothing we can really say. I was a little bit blind because I wanted bullishness for Euro and GBP. And for Euro, I must say that eventually I was right, but the timing was incorrect. And the reason why I didn't want to go short is the following. This till it's breached on a closing basis and the next candle uses this as resistance. This is bullish. Um, since we are in this dealing range, we came back in it again. And we never broke this one with an up candle that goes higher. We can stay in this range. And then we have the euro rates. We have NFP and we also have FOMC. It's going to be tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. I think this range will go by then. We can see how previous day's low was taken here, was taken also in here. This reaction happened at a very random level, as always, the BC uh, low in here. And Dixie managed to squeeze a little bit higher, taking the buy side liquidity up here. And also hitting the H4 low of this imbalance. Perfectly hit, comes back down again. Okay, uh, let's drop into the H1. And what we see in here is how we had this low that goes the move higher that it came back in. We ran below this low. We exploded to the upside with speed. Now, when there is the breaker from the low to the high, many times it doesn't need to go to 50% on the higher time frames. In the lower time frames, given there is more um more noise you can easily do that and we can take from the low to the high and we see it never went for equilibrium because the way the range is considered if we think about this move here as the manipulation really the range starts from here so if we go i'm just going to use the minimal from the open of the other block to the high came back to 62 because that's where the really where everything started from the fulcrum point the origin of the move because started the move up and immediately rejected didn't use anything came back in discount breaker hits it running stops and finds higher prices to previous days high then it goes again comes back in per value gap old high which again when you think about it it's a low that goes lower all the premature buys are stopped. This is the breaker. It's the breaker, goes higher again. And actually I'll mark this one out also in here with only one pixel because it's gonna be more relevant on the lower time frames. Um, on Euro, on Saxo, we have this volume imbalance. Price find uh, a Judas higher and I managed to squeeze a long in here and then it broke down. I tried another long and it failed, but I'll go into the trade breakdowns later. And uh, GBP, at the same time while Euro was going higher, GBP was failing to go any higher, which was basically feeling this imbalance in here, which it hit twice. So FVG thin, bounces, bounces, and now it created the equalize, which is interesting because now that we went inside here, and we reacted, maybe we start the market maker buy model to appear and the volume imbalance or this order block. On the lower time frame, M15, intraday, we can see the regional consolidation runs up for Frankfurt, hits the level in here. And the reason why I was bullish, first of all, since we were at daily support, it made sense to be bullish. But in here, notice how after a big dump, when we have consolidation SMT and we start breaking structure, it usually uh, gives us a nice sizable bounce. And I was, uh, let's say, lucky enough. In reality, I did some analysis on EuroGBP that told me that Euro was potentially stronger. But we have the SMT in here. This fails to go lower while this goes lower. After it happens, immediate displacement to the upside. We close above the daily BCI. We use we use we use it a little bit, explosion again, 
from this low to this high coming back in we go for the imbalance in here which is also 62% goes up again comes back in this order block was inside this value gap and the swing created in here filled this so this order block can be used in threshold upper portion at least goes higher hits the level starts selling off hard comes back in and this is where i was stubborn i was stubborn because i said okay we have that nice move lower maybe this is the real judas for the london session we took the lows we took previous week's low we have fomc later we can stay in a range so maybe this raid just means it's gonna go higher again and in here uh, we will talk about this later but i was trying to long it um it gave immediate feedback which was positive stopped here i said okay fine this is not going anywhere and i wasn't nimble enough to actually reverse the trade because it made sense to reverse it and actually go from here to here there were opportunities on the m1 but i didn't do it also when you see it is high lower higher we are inside this down candle so as soon as we go below it i can go short in here and the move should be quick because the low is here I can, I can simply have a stop around the upper portion of the fair value gap, which is rather tight. I think it can give a 1.5 R easily. Stop here plus the spread of 5. Yeah, 145. Just below the low is 1.5 with commissions, probably 1.4. But again, that's for another discussion. And then uh, we had GBP, which was weaker. I realized that my bias was incorrect. Or at least not correct yet so i went short gbp and i will show that later and gbp had this one which was rather interesting um in here when we went down we partially filled this for value gap and i expected the move a little bit lower to completely fill it but i closed the trade just because we were so close to the news even even if it spiked lower and then it went higher it does that in so in such, such a quick fashion that uh, plus the spread is high that maybe i wouldn't have gotten filled because the spread when it goes down you have to take the level plus the spread when you are on a buy limit as soon as that level is touched you are out and you can see how he hit that and immediately exploded at the upside came all the way back in to fill this and then explode the value again. You actually had a beautiful setup in here, pro properly scripted. I mean, look at this beauty. We have equal lows, we have a break, we immediately reject the speed, breaking the structure, it comes back in, and we have a low, high, lower. These are This is the breaker, okay? Now, when I mentioned how it's a little bit different when we are on the lower time frames because price is fractal but not so fractal as many think i said the 50 percent the 62 many times doesn't have to be hit and you can see in here it was actually hit because of course the range contracts differently and if we were maybe on the m30 this wouldn't have happened but it did happen i mean it's not like i, I placed my stop in here i actually got in this long too but I first of all I didn't share it so who cares secondly um, the entry was sloppy it wasn't that good because in here I can easily easily enter at the order block my stop can be below this thrust candle not even the order block low and I can see now we have a high higher higher a lower 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 this is a trend line this has buy side liquidity and usually this level is many times taken, but the explosion went so quick that because we had imbalance above us. So on the M15, you can see all of this imbalance. Let me go on the H1, let's see what was there. Yeah, there was this H1 imbalance here. Entry at the order block stop here. Let's adjust the levels. So it's going to be. The stop to 12 because I went around it. No, sorry. If it's 33, let me do this again. If it's here, I went around this to 30, no, to 30 like this, round down. And target up here. 
at the other block minus a little bit because I don't want to be perfect because there's no need plus the spread on the buy that was an easy 2R and I probably squeezed a 1.1 but uh, my entry was like in here and I exited up here so you can see how yeah it's 1.25 but I exited even closer so it was 1R um, GPP was the better one for the sales and now we will go into the breakdown of the trades I have my MT4 in here so everything is there first of all London session I did some analysis on your GBP, which is worth mentioning and I saw how in the daily which is also up here but uh, it's not big enough we went down we took buy side sell side liquidity into another block that gave a nice bounce so when that happens you take a low you expect a little bit of a retrace especially when it closes like this that Im shows immediate rejection because it means orders were filled down here went back and it's probably going to fill this one so this means euro is better for longs and gbp is better for shorts then you have to decide what dix is doing and then you act accordingly for the new york session i saw how we we actually we were trying to just to go higher we were not creating any imbalances to the downside we were creating to the upside so i was like yeah you know what this looks like bullish and uh i don't want to go short euro because we are daily support and we also have this backdrop in here after we took the low we had a nice displacement we came back in into this order block three hours we hit it and we had a positive reaction and we were so close to the upper portion of the range that I said you know what I don't I cannot justify any shorting in here so I think you can go higher or can be stronger so this was the first trade I had all of this behind me behind me I don't, I don't trade that this I'm, I'm not I'm not even at charts at midnight 35 then I said they move up so they move up again and so the equal lows, the volume imbalance, the fact that from year to year we didn't even hit equilibrium, so we might want to go to a premium before selling off if we really have to sell off. And the entry was kind, I guess, my rules, because it was on the M1, but I'm aware London can be really clean on the M1, especially Euro. So what I did was I had this as a drone liquidity. I had the fact that we had the equalize in here. And equalize I'm not marking because we have the white line which is roughly there. I see this move up super quick, breaks down, I enter in here, my stop is down here, and when it goes up, I go hold, 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 close, close the trade, and it goes lower. And let me see if I can pull that up. I don't think I can. Uh, but it's in the group, whatever. Because it doesn't let me, it tells me that the image is too big. Oh well, you saw it in the group. That was the first trade, 1.5R. I was lucky enough that I, I saw the SMT in here between Euro and Dixie. And I said, huh, this is not good. And the market indeed went lower and I wasn't nimble enough to actually reverse my trade and go short. The SMT is in here. At the breaker, not a random level, this is going into the volume imbalance. And of course inside its own breaker because we have this high lower higher this is the swing focus on the down candle you can see how the bodies were perfectly respecting that and um, we also have the consequent encroachment in here of this imbalance sold off previous week slow taken dropped again okay the second trade on gbp this is a little bit more complex and i need to build more of a narrative around this so bear with me we are at this level i wanted to see bullishness when this level was hit there was a, re a reaction but the reaction was actually weaker than what uh, i expected and that tells me a lot just for context the reaction was this one in here 
and all throughout the London session I saw that the market was really unwilling to go any higher and when we hit resistance levels we just dumped. All right, then we have coupled with this imbalance, it is a is bullish order block. I also had this for value gap, which is taken from the H2 because I think it's super clean in the H2. And I said, fine, this doesn't have to be breached. If this is breached on a closing basis, so if I'm taking it from the H2, I'm considering the closing the closure on the H2. Very simple. And I want to see that the next candle either fails to come back up here, creating the upper value gap, because the displacement have to be strong, or hits it immediately as a an immediate test and goes lower, and then I can look for shorts on the lower time frames. As you can see in this case, we just went straight lower, so that was valid. This section in here of price now is to me uh, balanced. And when it hits it, should act as resistance. So, on the H1 in here, what I have is price goes lower, it comes back in. Sorry, it comes. Okay, it comes back in, returns to what the daily CB high, which is already support once breached, uh, resistance once breached. Couple, coupling that with the imbalance breached in here and the fact that the bullish order block didn't give any meaningful reaction. So I'm waiting the order flow based on this daily order block should really send price higher. If it doesn't do that, it wants liquidity lower. So my entry was at 124.810, which is here. 124.810. And I managed to start. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. So uh, for the for the stop loss, what I did was I first of all saw that this is an order block and this is a breaker again. So my stop has to be, and this is a fair value gap. My stop has to be above the fair value gap. It needs to make sense. And this is what it made sense, but my stop was 12 pips. 12 pips is here. I know it looks like super messy right here, and I'm sorry about that, but these are the levels that I keep in my chart because it gives me lots of context. And on the M5, I had this bullish order block with a fair value gap, which might want to revisit. So if I think this level can be revisited, I'm waiting for also lower time frame just to add more confluence. So my entry was exactly here. Is it 810? Yes, exactly. 810. I don't know. There is a no, exactly. There's something wrong. 810 is here. Am I stop where? 12 pips? 13. Entry here, some drawdown, like three pips. And this trade, I collapsed it at 5.45, which is 5.45, which is here. And to be totally honest, <laughs> I heard the alert and I was I have so many uh, windows open that I couldn't really find it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it hit the liquidity pool and came back in and said, okay, fine. Uh, I would not be a dick if this reverses when I'm up to R in here, but it was 0 0.5 risk. Uh, I'll be pissed. And yeah, I closed it here. And then I managed to squeeze another position in here. And this trade, this short is based on the, on this. Bullish order block with the fair value gap. Okay, this is the origin of the move. Yes, we might say, oh, this is the order block or this is the order block. I'm focusing more on the fair value gap and the, the fact that we went lower to go up. In here, I'll use this one. We have the origin, which breaks. And I said the next candle either doesn't even retrace, creating a fair value gap and then comes back into the fair value gap and uses this as a BPR or immediately retraces into it. In this case, what it did 
it went down. I'm trying to see. Well, yeah, it went. Where did it end? Yeah, exactly here. So it break. It broke it with speed. It also broke the M5. And as soon as I saw this one going up, go, doing the immediate rebalance plus hitting the M15 level and coming back, uh, coming back down again, I entered short in here. I entered short. My stop loss was at 780, which is up here. And uh, the reason why it's up here, it's because my trading plan says that you want to play stop losses where traders are trapped. And I don't think anyone was trapped in here because we don't have major breakouts. We are still in the range, but we have efficient price action. There is nothing in here that needs rebalancing. And notice this, when we actually turn, since there is nothing to rebalance, it just goes for the stop immediately. It doesn't waste any time. It doesn't hold there because there is no imbalance. It doesn't have to feel that, deal in that range and then move again. It just goes straight. And then this one moved lower, lower, lower. And this one was a phenomenal exit because I managed to close my trade at 367. 367 is down here. It's a little bit different than this feed because in my feed, uh, it tells me that I closed at the, basically at the closure of this, but perfect exit, very proud of that. And then in here, continuing with the narrative, if we know that this can be a potential reversal and this is where the news came out, we need to we need to ask ourselves, oh, now we can think in terms of longs. Okay, fine. But which one do I want to go long on? I want to go on Euro because Euro GBP is bullish. So that's where you start analyzing the two and you notice that this, uh, that this and this failed to go lower. This went lower. So the run down in here is just the manipulation. So if this go, if this went lower, and this failed to go any lower, all the down move in here is just accumulating more orders to go immediately up once the news is released. The market tries to rebalancing to rebalance some of it. We have the daily BC consequent encroachment. We also have the order block, the breaker. Notice the breaker range is never breached from this low to this high never went past it and if it does because it can it, it doesn't have to do that on a closing basis on the m1 it can close and then come back into the range that's why i don't like the m1 because the trade management there is absolutely impossible for me it might be fine for you and uh, don't say oh you didn't try enough i've tried for eight months it doesn't work for me market comes back in it's the order block and what do we have to rebalance in here uh, nothing. What do we have to rebalance in here? Nothing. What do we have to rebalance in here? Nothing. What do we have to rebalance in here? Something. Market goes there and stops. Easy to say in hindsight because I'm the first one that closed for one hour up here, but it is what it is. Uh, the theory works. The application of the theory is a little bit more complex. Uh, and I'm always trying to improve, actually. Uh, I'm not like, oh, I've arrived. I'm the best trader ever. I don't think I ever will be. I can be the best trader for me, but I mean, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm going looking for continuous improvement. That's it for Forex. Let's quickly go into stocks indices because they died. They absolutely tanked beautifully. And just to mock a little bit uh, more about correlation, because uh, I mean, I want to have fun with it. The exact moment that Dixie, <laughs> that Dixie hit the H4 low and started going lower, everybody thinks, not not because people are stupid, but just because people listen to one thing and they just believe it without backtesting. So in that regard, maybe they're not the wisest. So it starts breaking down. What do you think? Oh, ES is going to have a, a, a very easy time going higher. Yes, exactly. Very easy time going lower though because the market is trying to seek its own liquidity and the liquidity on ES or what it wanted to do after you take external range liquidity. And again, you close like this, you most likely want to go back into the range and where do, where does it go? Or the block for value gap CB, CB 
PC, BPR, hits it, and it reacts from it. Which, if you were to take along, which one would you elect to take along on? The strongest, which so far looks it's Nasdaq, because it didn't fill the fair value gap, fully filled in here, going for the upper portion and here it went for the mean threshold. So Dow looks the weakest. Um, let's check. I didn't even check in this is today. I was too focused on Forex, but to be fair, I don't even see a setup in here. It's just straight down. But let's look for SMTs. Maybe we have some confirmation there and I don't see anything particularly special there. Um, yeah, okay. We have this one. We have this one. This went higher. This failed to go higher. This basically did the same. And notice this thing. If we if we focus on that, we think that Nasdaq is the weakest or ES is the weakest. When in reality, the one that went higher was the weakest. So the the fact that it goes higher or goes lower doesn't necessarily tell us which one is going to be the the leader to the downside or the upside. You also you always have to look for the PDAs and what makes sense. In this case, I would have go, uh, I would have went for yes. But there is no trade for me in here, so I have to miss all of this. It's a it's a shame, but there's not no way to enter. Let's let's check on the M1. Uh, yeah, you can enter here. You you don't enter in here. You can enter in here, but no, it doesn't even hit the fair value gap. You can after the breakdown hits it, stop above the thrust up here. That's a nice, very nice trade, but not my cup of tea that's not the way you trade i actually prefer ranges more than expanding markets unless the expanding markets really does the manipulation goes below a low and i buy it that's super easy but yeah that's a long video uh, i will i'm not sorry for it because there was a lot of uh, to uncover and uh, see you tomorrow remember that i will not be active anymore from 16 Okay, like 15.30 for the, basically the IM trend because it's going to be FOMC and the market usually, actually many, many times, chops and I don't want to I don't want to give money back to the market for no reason and neither should you. So I never tell you what to do, but please don't trade like, uh, don't trade in a tight range because you're just paying commission spreads and getting losses too. It's not worth it. Bye bye. Have a nice evening, I guess or whatever. Bye-bye.